Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and before we start talking about chapter 8 and equation of value, I thought I'd share with you guys something very quickly. Uh, I haven't even told my Facebook friends yet, but my app is available on the Android store. I'm still working hard to get it on the Apple store, but if you want and you have an Android device, you can download my app and play with it. Um, Give me some advice. I don't know if this is a good name. Um, I can change it if, if you guys think it would be call it something better. Um, it's a really cool app. You see one verse at a time. There's no clutter with little references everywhere like that. Um, but sure, you can go check it out. There's talks on some nice things and, and everything like that. And so far, it's got a five-star rating by me. This, I think it's only had like one download so far. But uh, just check that out. But if you do have an Apple phone, I am working to get it on that store. It is also on BlackBerry, so you can check that out. But I don't know if anyone has BlackBerry anymore. But anyway, that's just something I've been working on on the side is my little app. But let's get stuck into Chapter 8, Equation of Value. And I thought I'd just open with the app because this chapter is very small. There is not a lot to it. But that does not mean it's not important. In fact, what we're going to look at here is one of the most important things in the entire course. And that is the statement here, the equation of value. And it is with the equation of value that we can calculate a whole bunch of unknowns or we can calculate what price to charge or what interest rate we must receive or what, I don't know, how much we should invest in certain projects. So it is a very powerful equation which we use so many times in business. And it is very simple. The present value of the income must equal the present value of the outgo. Now, how does that work? How does the present value of the income equal the present value of the outgo? If a project costs, you know, a million dollars to to start off and then makes a hundred thousand dollars every year going forward for infinity, how 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 does that how do they equal well the present value of them will equal and the reason why the present value of both these uh, cash flows will equal is because we get to define or there is the balancing component of this equation which is interest and interest doesn't matter what your income uh, cash flow is doesn't matter what your outgo cash flow is the equation of value can equalize them when you discount them with the interest rate to bring them to their present value. So the cash flows can be anything and the interest rate can be what you determine it to be. And investors like to use this because they'll say one project um, you know, has a $500,000 investment and then it's going to make $60,000 every year. Is this better than the original one I said, which is be a million and then it's 100000 and by doing a present value and you know, calculating the equation of value, you can see that the interest that I would receive on the first one would be 10%, whereas the interest on the second one would actually be, be a little bit more, it would be around 12%. And the higher the interest rate means the more money my project's going to be making, so you choose that one, that your money grows more. However, don't just use this blindly because maybe that second project had more risk, and all these other various factors. But that's going a little bit off topic. Um, what I've just got here, don't be frightened by all these little summations and all that. These are just some of the various symbols you could see in the equation of value. But the most important thing is, and this is, I, I always used to get irritated with this when I was at Varsity because it takes a lot of time and it's just a nuisance. And that is sometimes you cannot calculate what the interest rate is supposed to be. So sometimes you can, it's quick, it's easy, it's lovely, but other times the mathematics is not sophisticated enough for us to calculate interest rates in certain situations. However, there is a way to get around this, there is like a little life hack, whatever you want to call it, and that is known as inter interpolation. And what interpolation is, it's basically a fancy word for saying we guess. So we put in an interest rate here, and we put the same interest rates in here. If they balance, we know we've got the right interest rate. But if we put in an interest rate here, and this side is heavier than this side, what we then do is we put in another interest rate so that this side is bigger than that side. 
we then use this formula to balance them. And I should actually have drawn it out, but it's this little triangle thing, and it's it's really clever how it does it. So this is actually because yeah, because I'm talking about a triangle, this is what we would call linear interpolation because it's a linear line. You get other fancy types of ones, but as far as the exams go, accuracy is not that paramount. So you can use linear interpolation, get away with it, and this is the formula. Now what I've not included in this video, and that's because you guys must go and do it for yourself because it's very beneficial, is to try and work out this formula. How did I get to this formula? Well, how did the notes get to this formula? Don't just go and read the proof in the, the course notes. Go and try and figure this out for yourself. It would be very beneficial. There can be some nasty exam questions, some real tricky curveballs regarding interpolation. There haven't been that many, but there could be. And you guys want to be prepared because you want to pass your exams because that's a good thing to do. So yeah, that is chapter 8, equations of value um, and linear interpolation. And yeah, if you're getting bored of studying, you can come download my little app. It's very simple. It's all text, but you get to swipe in some cool little ways. And it is a lot of fun. And if you do, come and give it five stars or at least four stars. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think of it. But yeah, that's all my time for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like, click subscribe, click whatever you else want to click. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers.